Valley Church. Hope for those who have given up on church. Hi, I'm Lance Stoddart, and this is the App Group video for the week of Sunday, September 9th. Now, this week, Jerry brought us a teaching uh, entitled, Love Your Neighbors. And that came out of Matthew 5, uh, verses 43 and 48. It's actually the last message in our series called, The Best Stuff Jesus Taught. In his message, Jerry talked to us about uh, Jesus' teaching on how we're to treat our enemies. And he had three specific points. Uh, The first one was, wish good on your enemy. Uh, Second was, be true to your father. And the third was, be perfect. Now, Jerry looked looked at this topic from the perspective of, um, of imitating God, of obeying him and honoring him in how we treat those uh, who exhibit evil towards us. I want to look at the, at, the same, uh, at the same topic, but I want to come at it from a little different perspective in this app group teaching. Uh, I'm entitling this app group teaching, uh, I Heart Haters, or I Love Haters. And you'll see in the title there, that's a, a little nod to the younger generation with a, with a, a little text uh, heart in there, if you're wondering what that is. And if you're over 35, you might not know, but that's what that is. I heart haters or I love haters. And I, I want to talk to you out of the book of 2 Corinthians, Paul uh, writing to the church in Corinthians, chapter 6, verse 17. And it says this, Therefore, come out from among unbelievers and separate yourselves from them. Say, uh, says the Lord, don't touch their filthy things and I will welcome you. You know, one of my seminary teachers, uh, one of my seminary professors used to say, when you hit that word, therefore, uh, in the word of God, you have to stop and ask yourself the all important question, what's it there for? And you know, that's been an incredibly, incredibly insightful uh, statement. And it may well be the one thing that I've used the most out of all of my time at, at grad school. That little statement, when I hit that word, therefore, I stop. And ask myself that question, what's it there for? Well, specifically here, uh, Paul has just finished asking a series of questions and making a very important statement that leads up to the therefore. And he leads in at verse 14 there in, in, uh, in 2 Corinthians 6. He says, how can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? What harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? How can a believer be a partner with an unbeliever? And what union can there be between God's temple and idols? So he asks that series of questions and then he leads or then he he follows it with this this statement quoting uh, the Old Testament and a prophetic word there as God was speaking. Uh, In verse 16 it says, As God said, I will live in them, walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. The focal point of this message is clear, and it's that we are called to live lives that are clear and distinctly different, clearly and distinctly different from the world around us. We are called to be separate, to be out of or or, or distinct from the world around us, and that's really my first point. I'd like to jump back uh, there to to verse 17, and Paul says, separate yourselves from the world. You see, one of the primary ways that we can do this, one of the primary ways that we can demonstrate the the distinctness, the, uh, uh, the word calls us peculiar people, not peculiar in the sense of weird, but peculiar in the sense of different. And one of the primary ways that we can demonstrate this distinct difference that we as believers in Christ have from the world around us is in how we deal with and handle our relationships. Let's just be honest. People are difficult, aren't they? People are difficult. Even the ones that we love the most can be at times sometimes the most difficult. Relationships are challenging. 90% of our evening news, and you know, the news isn't necessarily the news as much as it is a, the latest update on tragedy, difficulty, challenge, and heartbreak. But 90% of our news revolves around these issues of relationships. Personal relationships produce conflict. Business and financial relationships produce conflict. 
Political relationships produce conflict. Cross-cultural relationships produce conflict. Religious relationships produce conflict. Each of us faces conflict as a result of the, the relationships that we have in our family settings, in our social settings, in our work settings. People are difficult. And that's true for us as unbelievers, and it's absolutely true for, for, I'm sorry, that's true for us as believers, and absolutely true for the unbelievers that we are around every single day. And one of the ways that we can show a distinct difference between us and the world, one of the ways that we are called to be unique and set apart, is through how we deal with our, with our relationships how we respond to these challenges. We're supposed to be making a very loud statement. Now, loud in the sense of obvious, not necessarily loud in the sense of, of noise level. It's a loud statement about what we truly believe. You see, we are called to separate ourselves from the world. And now I want to jump back to Matthew 5 for this next point uh, from Jerry's teaching, uh, in specifically Matthew 5 verse 47. The second point would be, we have to make it obvious. We have to make it very clear that there's something unique and different about us. Jesus asked this question. He says, well, if you're kind only to your friends, how are you any different than anyone else? What is it that draws attention to you? What is it that demonstrates my activity, my presence in your life? And then he throws in the, the very obvious, and sometimes when I read this, I hear a little hint of sarcasm, although I don't know, maybe that's how, he, that, that's how Jesus said it, maybe it's more my hearing, but he says, even the pagans do that. You see, we're called to stand out and to stand up. Jerry pointed out that we are to do this both in a public and in a very private fashion. Publicly, called to make a difference. Cut publicly, called to deal with people who treat us eat with evil in a, in a very different way. And privately, called to pray for and quietly serve those who, who do evil against us and who persecute us. You see, we do this not only to obey God, which is what Jerry was talking about, but also to make a very loud and a very clear statement to a world that is struggling with how to deal with relationships and frankly struggling with many, many other issues. We are called to be distinctly different on this and many other fronts. That's why as believers, we don't engage in fornication. We don't engage in sex before marriage. We don't live with our future spouse. We make clear and distinct separations. We love people who are struggling with sin, but we do not engage in that sin. And that's our stance on, on issues of same-sex marriage and homosexuality and, and abortion and many other issues in our culture today that we as Christians are called to take a stand uh, against and to live lives that are distinctly and uniquely different. You see, people may not understand why we do things differently, why we choose to live our lives differently, why we choose to take the stands, the positions, and embrace the lifestyle that comes with a relationship with Jesus Christ. People may not understand why, but they understand that we do they see the difference. The difference is very clear. And I got, I got news for you. Don't expect that difference initially to be embraced. Don't expect that difference to be welcomed. In fact, Jesus said, listen, it's, it's, it, coming and following after me is going to be picking up a cross each and every day. There's going to be challenges. There's going to be difficulties. The enemy is going to come against you. The world and, and the social norms of the culture in which we live uh, are, are going to come against you. It's, and for people who see us living differently, it, that difference can be scary. It's, it can be uncertain and it can be intimidating, but it also will open the opportunities at some point for us not just to live lives of, of uniqueness and difference before them, but it will open the door for us to be able to give testimony to why we've chosen to take that position, why we've chosen to live that lifestyle, why we've, why we've chosen to reach out in tenderness and compassion and care and kindness, even for those who treat us the worst. 
the world's watching. And we are called to live a distinctly, uniquely separate life that draws attention to us. You see, I've heard people say, well, I, I, don't, I don't have to, to evangelize. I don't feel initially called to that, but I live a life. Uh, uh, um, I let my life do my evangelizing for me. Well, I have a question for you. If you've ever made that statement and you're still, quote unquote, living that life, but have never had a chance or have never taken the opportunity to follow up the lifestyle that you live with a testimony, a verbal testimony, answering the questions and, and, the, and the wonder that people have about the lifestyle that you live, then here's the question. Is your life really that distinctly different? Is it so distinctly different that it generates the question in the minds of the people who don't know Jesus that see you and see me on a daily basis and cause them to ask, why would they do it that way? Why would they say that? Why would they handle it that way? Why would they respond in that situation that way? A lot of times I think that statement, while well, I let my life speak for itself, just simply becomes an excuse and a cover for living a life that's comfortable and hidden in society rather than what Jesus called us to do. Live peculiar, distinct, unique, bold lives for him before a world that may not understand and will not be accepting, at least initially. We've got to uh, make it obvious. And then the third thing, third point, verse 17, we're going back to, to 2 Corinthians now. The big question is, whose acceptance are you after? Who are you living for? Whose approval are you living for? And whose approval am I living for? As I was putting this teaching together, I was strongly convicted yet again in areas of my life. I have to ask myself this question regularly. Who am I living for? You see, that, that statement in verse 17, that prophetic statement or that, that, that quote from the Old Testament, God speaking, says this, don't touch they're filthy things, and I will welcome you. You see, the world is only ready to accept you and to accept me if we're willing to conform into the image of the world. But if we make the decision to stand for Christ, if we make the decision to live lives according to God's word, if we make the decision to, to confront boldly our culture, on these areas where it does not agree with the gospel that we profess, then we are going to be challenged. We're going to, we're going to get pushback. We're not going to be accepted, at least by the world. But God's very clear. If we don't touch their filthy things, if we don't allow our lives to get caught up in the, in the, in the status quo, in the, in the, in the, the moment, in the, the cultural tendencies of, of, the, of the community and culture in which we live, then it says, God says, I will welcome you. You see, the world won't accept us or won't welcome us unless we conform to its image. But the converse is also true. God will only accept us if we're committed to being fully separate. Not just, not, not, not just physically, not physically separate, but really morally separate from the culture in which we live. So there you have it, those three points. Separate yourselves from the world. Make that separation obvious. And answer this question for yourself. Whose acceptance are you living for? Now, there's a few questions that we've put together for you and your app group to discuss. I hope that they're insightful, and I hope that you'll take a minute to, to talk through them and let that conversation go. Not just simple yes or no questions, but really kind of digging deep and challenging each other with, with your answers and the commentary. I know how much I enjoy that part of our app group. I want to say thank you to you for uh, watching this video and for being a part of a Freedom Valley app group. My name's Lance Stoddart, and this is the app group video for Sunday, November 9th. Thanks for watching.